you know, I know it's been brought up, uh, MJ 12, um, you know, if, if, if that was such a thing, I, I don't, you know, I don't understand if it's like an official body or it's like something that would be rogue or both yeah. or both, you know, interesting. Um, and, and again, that, you know, there's a group that has been brought up called Zodiac. I can't comment on that. Okay. And, um, what about, uh, Collins elite? I, I, that I won't comment on other than that, uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, there's a few individuals that certainly, um, fall within that description that I, that I know. In the revelation of, of David Grush's testimony, uh, you know, crash retrievals, bodies, um, disinformation, um, he, him saying that he had reported to the inspector, uh, the intelligence community inspector general program names, um, you know, something that comes to mind is Zodiac, right? So yeah. um, in, you know, just a brief kind of rehash of you know what is zodiac yeah yeah i'm really glad you brought this up uh this is something that i raised a couple of years ago and i think you're like one of the only people to pick up on this and really stay with it so zodiac uh very likely is a, a different and maybe more accurate name for what we might and, have called mj12 yeah so a, a kind of a ufo or let's now uap uh control group might be one way to look at it uh the the name zodiac came out as far as i know for the first time in a few issues over 20 years ago in ufo magazine uh back in the very late 90s you know i can uh i can give you a link for that i have a free link to my website for that whole pdf yeah and i can give it to you and you can people can just download it it's really good reading. It's three episodes of UFO Mag from I think 1998, 1998. And um it's fictionalized, but it's very thinly veiled fictionalized. And so it's uh it's in a series of articles written by a man named Jeffrey Griffith, who used a, uh, a pseudonym. Pseudonym was Greg Halifax, but it's Jeffrey Griffith, uh, who I think is alive. He is, and I, tr yeah. me and others have tried to contact him. Yeah, I know a, a journalist who tried to contact him too, and it was dead end. Yeah, no, he doesn't want to talk to anyone. But Griffith is mentioned, of course, in the Davis Wilson notes. That's a key thing. And where Zodiac mentioned? Yeah, at the on the last page, right? In the yeah, the alien autopsy. Well, in the alien autopsy the, email thread. Yeah. yeah, not in Davis Wilson. But 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 it was it was in the collection of Edgar Mitchell's files. Correct. That's correct. So Edgar Mitchell, who is part of the National Institute for Discovery Science, he's on the on the board there, knew all the same people, knew Davis, knew Putoff, knew Kid Green, knew Colm Kelleher. Um and of course uh knew Stephen Greer and uh, Will Miller and all the people who spoke to Thomas Wilson, knew Thomas Wilson. Mitchell is very perfectly placed to know a lot of this. And when he died, his papers came out. And yeah, the, the Davis notes came out. And also this email thread that he had in, uh, I think it was 2001, with Putoff and Davis and Kit Green was in there and right. Colm Keller was in there. And they're first of all, they're talking about the the Ray Santilli alien autopsy video, which that was interesting. The whole question is, you know, uh, Kit Green is in the thread saying, yeah, that video looks exactly like what I was briefed on years before. And Davis, yeah, I think, I think that's what's so crazy is that people hadn't talked about that. I mean, in that email chain, yeah. Kit Green is saying that he was brought to the, pentagon several times yeah and briefed on that's alien right. bodies back in 87 88 and then uh in the early 90s like how is that not like crazy important 
It is super important. Well, of course, now I interviewed Kit in the aftermath of that. And, uh, you know, I was never allowed to publish the full unadorned transcript, but I did write a very detailed article about my interview. And that is, that's publicly available. Um, I can give you a link for that. People want to read it, but I don't, to this day, I mean, I don't really know what Kit's total, what his actual position on that is. Right. He has said publicly, and I'll just, out of respect to him, and I have a lot of respect for him, he has said he no longer believes that he was legitimately briefed and being shown images of actual aliens. He he believes, or at least that's what he said to me, that he was subjected to a kind of op, a disinformation, basically a test. Yeah. Um, and and one of the reasons he believes that is that he he said like I I was never actually brought into such a program. I always thought that this would lead to me being brought into the program, but I never was. And so he concludes he says that that what he was shown was not true. But be that as it may. So if that is the case in 2000 2001 though he still believed that it was legit. So here he is on this email thread telling Davis and Putoff and the rest. I think Alexander was part of that thread briefly too, John Alexander, saying, oh yeah, that that stuff is real. <laughs> That's 100% real. And Davis in the thread, you could say, is like skeptical or like incredulous, like, really? Are you serious? Because that looks like BS to me. So that whole, that's an interesting conversation. And at the very end of that email thread, it's many pages, Hal Putoff writes to Green and He's, uh, well, and to the other guys in the thread, and he's like, hey, what do you all think about this thing called Zodiac? This is uh, in the recent UFO magazine. He said, I think it was written by someone named Sedge Masters, the Sedge Masters articles. Actually, yeah. I don't know. Did he mention Zodiac by name in that thread? He did. He might know. Yeah, I thought he, he did. did. He says it was the articles by a Sedge Masters. Yeah. And uh, real, uh, he got it mostly before- right. Before I forget, I just want to highlight that, you know, you know, Zodiac and, and this very same regard and instance was brought up in Jacques Vallée's volume five. Yes. Very good point. Yes. Good to know. So like this has been discussed by the crowd, the Bigelow crowd, sometimes as I call them. Um, so and in the email thread, Putoff basically said, we have good reason to think that this is a this is more than just fictionalized truth. So he's talking about the UFO man. He's talking about the whole Zodiac thing. So, um, yes, indeed. Because we know that in the Davis Wilson notes, Davis mentions to Wilson, he brings up uh, Mary Elizabeth Elliot and right. Jeffrey Griffith. Right. They're all part of this whole thing. And Griffith and Mary Elliot, I am quite convinced were witnesses to a USO incident off uh, Rancho Palos Verdes in California of an object apparently coming right out of the water, flying over their car, and probably both of them driving up after it and running. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole adventure that's written about in the Sedge Masters Zodiac article in the UFO magazine. So put off and green and davis they they all knew about this somehow and they were very interested in this story and somehow griffith and mary elizabeth elliott learned about the existence of this program called zodiac that's what i think happened and and the nids group got wind of it and they became very very interested in this so anyway zodiac is simply in this rendition a different name for MJ-12. But think about what Zodiac is. There's 12 houses in the Zodiac. It's 12. MJ-12. So there's a, a definite kind of connection there uh, in terms of meaning. I think Zodiac very well may be the other name. Uh, definitely some of that, the, the NIDS and the TTSA group today, uh, you ask them about Zodiac, and you're, you're going to get a knowing reply. They may not say anything about it, but they know. They know about Zodiac. So that may be the real name 
for MJ-12, a, a UFO control group. I, I suspect it is the real name for it. Mr. Gresh, finally, do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General and some of which to the Intelligence Committees. I actually had the people with the firsthand knowledge um, provide a protected disclosure to the Inspector General. Intelligent extraterrestrials. Something I can't discuss in public setting. Um, okay, I can't ask when you think this occurred. <laughs> um, if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. And was this documentary evidence, this video, photos, eyewitness? Like, how would that be determined? The specific documentation I would have to talk to you in a skiff about. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and, and you may or may not be able to answer my last question, and maybe we get into a skiff at the next hearing that we have, but who in the government either... What agency, sub-agency, what contractors, who should be called into the next hearing about UAPs, either in a public setting or even in a private setting? And, and you probably can't name names, but what agencies or organizations, contractors, et cetera, do we need to call in to get these questions answered, whether it's about funding, what programs are happening, and what's out there? I can give you a specific cooperative and hostile witness list of specific individuals uh, that were in those. And, and how soon can we get that list? I'm happy to provide that to you after the hearing. Super. Thank you. And I yield back. And in in those same set of documents that were released from Edgar Mitchell's files after he had passed away, there was also uh, uh, an email thread with Kate Green, Hal Putoff, and others regarding an alien autopsy video. And, uh, you know, I mean, there was things in that Thing that were way more interesting than the Santilli film. You have Dr. Kit Green saying that he was briefed in the Pentagon three times in the late 90s and shown pictures of autopsies by people in the Pentagon. How I don't understand how that is not like picked up on. That's an incredible number one. Um, and I don't know if you you probably can't speak to any of that, but George, I want to start with you here. In that email thread, there's something mentioned by uh, Dr. Hal Putoff about a group called Zodiac. Have you ever heard of it? Yes, I've heard of it. Um, I'm just not ready to go into that, though. Yeah, I've, I've heard of it. I think it's real. Um, but I, 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 I'm not able to talk about it right now. I know I know you can't really get into it, um, but could you offer any context to the audience listening of your understanding of what it might be? Well, sort of a something akin to MJ-12, an idea of that we had of what MJ-12 would be, uh, you know, and those those are documents are highly controversial even now. Uh, whether or not it really existed is unknown. Uh, this is a, a similar sort of an organization that's been described in high levels of UFO lore for a long time. I, if I had to give an opinion about whether it's real, I'd say, yeah, I think it's real. And Colm, can you say anything about Zodiac? Um, beyond what George has said, no, um, I, um, I, I think George summarized it really well. <laughs> and, and George, uh, and again, I don't know whether you can answer or not. Do you, do you think that that is an actual name of a program or group, or is that something used as a cover? Yeah, I, I, I suspect it's not an official name. I don't think it's going to pop up in a document somewhere. I, I think it's kind of a loose, uh, a loose sort of an unofficial name for a, a, a group and an organization, but I could be wrong. I, I mean, I, they, I'm not a member. They don't let me in. So uh, uh, maybe they, I'd like to tell them, put in a good word for me. <laughs> um, what is Zodiac? Okay. Well, Zodiac might be one of a couple of different things, but all pretty much related. So, I mean, at, at bottom, I guess you could say it would be roughly equivalent to how people have talked about MJ-12 for many, many years. So MJ-12, of course, which became known or discussed, we should say, in the 1980s, 
about 40 years ago now almost um is the legendary alleged uh ufo control group right so that would be the the people who are running the ufo cover-up and ufo knowledge above or beyond even formally elected governments uh something that by the alleged mj12 documents that leaked out in the 1980s was originally a U.S. government creation of like senior defense and scientific officials. Uh, and then as according to rumors, according, you know, depending on who you believe, um, more or less gravitated to becoming something international or at least transnational, maybe by the 1960s or 70s, uh, kind of a going beyond U.S., formal U.S. control. But anyway, that's supposed to be MJ-12. And as most people watching or listening no. there's never been agreement among the ufo research community about mj12 there have been defenders and there have been people who have just said it's all bs um uh, for my part i've i've never been an mj12 debunker in the sense that like i've all i have always believed that there has been an mj12 type of organization i've always believed that not just because of the alleged documents but just because of everything that I've encountered in my years of looking into UFOs. Maybe we can get into that. But anyway, so Zodiac is a, a name that really went under the radar for decades and decades and decades and then surfaced. And it is at least feasible or plausible that Zodiac might be the name the proper name for this control group instead of MJ-12. At least that is a possibility. And we can get into why why some of us think it may be. Yeah, so just, just for the audience too, um, actually, Rich, you you wrote a, a fantastic article and you, and you read the article, an audio piece, and you included the original um, kind of uh, the PDF version yes, yes, yeah, of, yeah. of the Zodiac story. So just for people listening, uh, what we're about to talk about is going to be linked in the description on Richard Dillon, uh, his website. So how did, how did this Zodiac come on the scene recently, the name and, and the story? Yeah. So, um, well, I guess we can trace it all back. So, you know, two years ago now, uh, the leak of the famous or infamous Admiral Thomas Wilson notes came out. That was in June of 2019. These are Eric, Dr. Eric Davis's notes of his meeting with Admiral Thomas Wilson after Wilson had retired from the Defense Intelligence Agency in 2002. Davis meets with Wilson. They sit in a car for over an hour talking all about um, Wilson's failed attempt to get access to a reverse engineering program dealing with alien tech, all right, when Wilson was at the Joint Chiefs. So that whole thing blew up in June of 2019. Uh, all of that came from the estate of the late Dr. Edgar Mitchell of Apollo 14. Mitchell had died a couple of years before that. And by 2019, those docu that document leaked out. Well, another document leaked out as well from Mitchell's estate, actually a couple of things. But the other, the other significant document that leaked out was an email thread from 2001 on the even more infamous Ray Santilli alien autopsy video. And we're not here to talk about the legitimacy or not of that. That's irrelevant for our purposes. But what is relevant is that Mitchell had in his uh, papers, this, it was a printed out email thread. I mean, not many people print emails these days, but I think in 2001, that was still kind of a new thing. And for an important email thread, you would print it out sometimes. And Mitchell did print it out in the form of paper. And it was, uh, between basically all the folks connected with the National Institute of Discovery Science, which Mitchell was part of as well. So that means Robert Bigelow, who ran it. That means Dr. Hal Puthoff. That means Dr. Kit Green, Christopher Green. That means uh, Dr. Colm Kelleher. And it means Dr. Eric Davis. CC'd on that discussion were John Alexander and Robert Bigelow. Yeah. I just want to add right there, yeah. um, Dr. Eric Davis confirmed to me that those the alien autopsy files were legitimate. The email he, thread. Correct. Yeah. So, I will also add that Dr. Kit Green confirmed it to me that that same thread was legit. And I publish an article about that on my website as well. That's a, that's an open source article. Anyone can read. So what, so you got Davis and Green both telling people, yep, that email thread is totally real. 
Yeah. yeah because it's important to say that because when all that came out, there were people uh, who were very loud about saying that's a hoax. That's all BS. Alexander's email address is incorrect. Uh, I talked with Kit Green about that. Green, he said, no, no, all of that is absolutely correct. And he was 100% authentic about that. And I, Davis said that to you. So, yeah. yeah. So the email thread is correct. Um, but anyway, so the point is that at the very end, this is a 2001 series of discussion. And by the way, the email thread is itself quite interesting. You've got these scientists asking, basically asking Kit Green, who is a medical, a forensic pathologist and a medical expert, top level, top, top, top level biologist in many ways. This is a man who in the CIA used to give briefings to President Ronald Reagan on matters of science. Kit Green is a brilliant, is a brilliant man. So because he's a medical expert, somehow this came up as a topic like the Santilli alien, is Israel, is BS, whatever. And what was shocking to read when this leaked out in 2019 is here's Green telling his colleagues, like Davis, who was mostly incredulous, says, oh yeah, that thing is real because I was briefed in a skiff in a sensitive compartment uh, uh, information facility in the 1980s, Green yeah. is saying, where I was shown a still image of a, of a being that looked identical. <laughs> it's like to what Santilli had. So like all that shocking, the rest of the Nibs guys, it's like Putoff and Davis and uh, Kelleher, and you could see like, they're kind of skeptical. They're like, really? It just seemed like it's kind of fake. But anyway, so that was an interesting, and by the way, Green later said to me and said publicly that he ceased believing that that was real uh, a little while after that. And he has his own reasons and you can go into that. And I wrote about it in, in my article on my website. You can get into it. But anyway, so the point is that whole thing, that's a fascinating conversation. Uh, but at the end of that, thread is an email by Puttoff, by Hal Puttoff, to uh, Kristen Zimmerman, who's a partner of Kit Green's. All right. So they're all part of the same little group. She was in on this thread. And now this is from... Uh, 99? Uh, this is from early 2001. Um. I oh, know, actually, no, the, the, this, I'm looking here because I'm trying to remember, uh, the end of 1999. Yeah, the, okay, this is in the 99. So anyway, so uh, this, is, this is what he writes to Kit and to Kristen. Hal, Hal's writing, just wanted to check. Didn't I send you a package of UFO mag articles by pseudonymous spelling? Uh, he wasn't sure about the spelling of the word pseudonymous. Uh, author Sedge Masters concerning crash retrievals by a group called Zodiac. If so, still hoping for a readout by you on this as we have reason to, as we have reason to believe the set of stories, three, I think, are only slightly fictionalized versions of a source's experiences, writing up records for the archives at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Specifically, ever heard of Zodiac, which is, a supposed, which is supposed to be a true name? That was his question there. And actually he was quite right. There were three articles. Um, the author of the series was not Sedge Masters. The author of the series was actually Greg Halifax, which is also a pseudonym. And Sedge Masters is the fictional character in the article. So uh, Hal got that a little bit wrong. You just misremember that. But he had the basics absolutely right. The, and so that's, that appeared at the end of the alien autopsy email thread. It's like, oh, what is this little interesting thread here on Zodiac? What is Zodiac? Um, I remembered reading it when that came out. It, it registered with me. And I have a, not a totally complete, but I have a very, very good collection of the old UFO magazines. And I remember when it came out, I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to look into that. And then I didn't. And then yeah. a colleague of mine uh, wrote to me, he's like, hey, have you looked into that Zodiac connection? And I'm like, oh, actually, let me do that. <laughs> so yeah. I went, I, I finally went into my collection of UFO Mag and this actually dovetailed, I was doing research through UFO Mag for volume three of UFOs in National Security State. And yes, I am still working on that. So I was going through that 
And I thought, let me pull up my UFO magazine collection. And bingo, I did find, I had those articles. I was going to find them here for our podcast. And I, I've got my collections above my head. I, I don't know where those three are. I'm sure they're hiding in a stack somewhere in my house. Yeah. Uh, but, but again, it, the people can go to the link that you've got and the yeah. PDF of all three articles is there. I took those pictures myself, created as a PDF myself. It's very nice, easy to read for anyone. Yeah. So anybody listening on the YouTube description, there will be the article to the full you know, story about, you know, written by the alleged or the pseudonym Greg Halifax uh, about the pseudonym Sedge Masters uh, talking about the Zodiac story. You can you can read the yeah. entire three articles. It'll be in the description. Yeah. And for that, I wrote a brief article, uh, which you, anyone can read. And actually what I did, I often do this on my website. I'll write a piece. But a lot of times I know folks, some people like to read, some people like to hear. So what I'll often do is um, I'll write an article and many times I will record an audio of it. as like a mini podcast for my website at Richard Allen Members. And I did that as well. So someone can listen to me talk about it if they care, or they can just go right to the article. Or yeah. I mean, right to the Sedge Masters pieces. So whatever someone wants, they can just access it. Um, I can talk a little bit more about that because it's actually quite interesting. Um, so anyway, Hal put off in his, oh, and by the way, there was no answer uh, in, the, in the email thread that we have yeah. to his question about the Sedge Masters article. So we don't know what anyone else said. But um, what, what we can do, like he, he was fundamentally correct about his description of it. And we can talk a little bit about that. So the, when you go into the, uh, the articles from UFO magazine, it's very interesting. Like it's, it was, those articles were written as fiction, but even, you know, when these were published by Bill Burns back in 1998, it was, it was very, it's very interesting. It was obvious that, like the description is, in fact, I'm going to pull this up here. They give a, um, a little brief author bio in two of the three articles. One of the articles doesn't even give him a bio. And they just describe him, a writer researcher for over 20 years. Greg Halifax lives in Southern California. This is the first in an occasional series of stories that while presented to us from seemingly trustworthy sources, our second or third hand anecdotes and cannot be verified at this time, they should be weighed as such. Uh, and then there's a second author bio from another, uh, the second article, a writer researcher for over 20 years, Greg Halifax lives in Southern California. He has a number of good friends from the military industrial complex and they leave it at that. Uh, the third article didn't even offer a bio of Halifax at all. That yeah. was basically it. So, so um, it's it's a plausible dino, uh, deniability thing. Uh, it's almost kind of like the the Tom the Long Secret Machines, where you know they're trying to put out a fictional with fiction, uh, you know, fact with fiction thing. Um, but do we do we know who Greg Halifax is? I think I do, and um, you you know we just tell people off that when you and I were talking off camera, I gave you the name of the person that I believe it is. I'm, I would say I'm pretty sure I know who he is. Um, a few, I, but I'm not 100% and I, I feel uncomfortable giving the name up. What I will say is a few people have tried to reach out to him and all he does is hang up the phone. He's not interested in talking to people about this. Absolutely not. Um, but I would say that um, there's probably people listening to this who might have done enough work into it and they may even know. I just, I just don't, um, I think, I mean, there's connections to some of the names that are in the Admiral Thomas Wilson notes by Dr. Eric Davis. I'll say that. Yeah. Much. So if you go through that, you can, you can see some connections. He's quite elderly now, but I will say that this man was uh, almost certainly a corporate attorney for TRW uh, in California, definitely in aerospace. And I think we can say that, yeah. Yeah. The other the other thing I want to point out about the articles as they appeared in UFO Mag in '98, um, it's it was an unusual like to total lack of like in each of the article in each of those magazines, each issue would have 
uh, like publishers uh, or the editor's notes at the beginning of each issue. Like, you know, when you open up a magazine, it's like editor's notes and they talk about the magazine. And in none of the three issues did either the publisher, Bill Burns, or the editor-in-chief, who was Vicki Ecker, no one made reference to these extremely interesting pieces. Like, yeah. I mean, the fact is they're very well written. The fact is they're actually just great to read. They're, they're awesome to read. If you yeah. want to read it as fiction, knock yourself out. They're fun to read. But, but it's also the case, like when you can see that these are thinly veiled fiction, like you would think that the publisher or the editor would say, check this out. We've got this fascinating, very tantalizing uh, series of articles. And there was no mention of it. So they weren't really quiet about it at the time when they wrote it, when they published it. Um, so anyway, um, I just thought that was, and, and you know, so you're wondering who is Greg Halifax? That was clearly a pseudonym. Um, I suspect that the actual author may have had had some time where he spent in Halifax, Canada. Um, I would be my guess. <laughs> I, I actually yeah. think so. But um, anyway, so the stories in the, the three pieces, uh, I mean, basically are uh, Sedge Masters is kind of like a James Bond character that this author creates. He's like a kind of a can-do guy. He's had kind of a lot of experiences in the, in the military and in the classified world. And he gets recruited into this program called Zodiac. Uh, there's a fair amount of description of the kind of psychological profile that was necessary for him to be selected for Zodiac. Uh, in fact, one of the things that the author mentions is that it's actually way more important to have someone of the right psych profile than even of certain technical qualifications. I mean, they need, they want someone with an intelligence background. This guy was an expert interviewer, interrogator. That was his name, main expertise in the story. But uh, they wanted him because he fit the exactly correct psychological profile of someone who was going to be stable, who was going to fall apart, and you know, that type of thing. So that was interesting. But then what they uh, get into is this program called Zodiac. And that's how it's, that's the name of it that was described. And, uh, and, it, he, and he learns that this is a UFO program. And it's a program that deals fundamentally with crash retrievals of UFOs. So, and in fact, when you ask what is Zodiac, it's entirely possible like that if there is a group that's like MJ-12, that's a control group, Zodiac might not be that exactly. Zodiac might be a UFO or UAP crash retrieval operation. That would be a subdivision, you might think, of something like MJ-12. I mean, we don't really know. Or it could be the total control group. We don't know. Um, and I, we could follow up on what a few people like Lou Elizondo said and a few other people that I've talked to off the record. But going back to the article, I guess we could just say, um, you know, you follow Sedge Masters, sort of uh, his adventure into checking, into investigating something that went wrong at a UFO crash retrieval. And, and, yeah. and in the fictionalized story, what went wrong was that this, this team, um, and I think the team is like of, um, I, I should have really read the whole article before we did this, but uh, it's like 60, 60 people are part of this team. And when they were doing a retrieval, there was a big UFO that was above them and yeah. screwed with their memories. Yeah. And they were, they were missing like an hour, an hour and a half, I think, of time. And so he writes this up and it's a very interesting fictionalized portrayal. And then in the, the last piece, uh, he, the author writes about a UFO event that takes place off the coast of California, where an object, uh, I think, comes out of the water. It's a water-based UFO sighting. And um, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, what I will say, what I can say definitely is that the late author, UFO researcher, Ange Ruffle, I don't know if you and I ever talked about this, but in the, in the late 70s, she was, a, she was a great researcher. She wrote a fantastic biography of the late James McDonald. Oh, um, no. Yeah. And, and it's called, that book is called Firestorm. 
and it's the definitive biography of James McDonald, I would say. Um, but any, anyway, Anne Druffel lived in Southern California as well. And um, she apparently, she investigated this particular UFO event and wrote about it in uh, one of the MUFON journal issues. And golly, I just wish I had the uh, issue in front of me in my notes. If, if, uh, if I remember it after we're done, well, I'll give you the link and you can put that information in your, in your description. Yeah. But she, she clearly was engaged in researching this. And it is my belief that the author, Greg Halifax, was either a direct witness to that particular UFO event or very, very close to a woman whose name is listed in the Wilson document who might have been the direct witness. Well, it's even funny that they mentioned that Greg Halifax lives in Southern California. <laughs> oh, know? yeah, right. Exactly. That's that's mentioned yeah. in, uh, in the article in UFO magazine. So anyway, what, what it really looks like is that this author, and, you know, it's stated in his bio in UFO magazine that he's got a lot of friends in the military industrial complex. He's been interested in UFOs for... 20 years at that time. So since the late seventies, yeah, that would be since he had his, his sighting. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, and, and it's, you know, it's really interesting. Some, I mean, again, some of this could be fiction in the, um, in the, uh, sure, some of it is definitely fictionalized. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you know, but they're talking about like, Oh, well, it's not, they're talking about the interaction with some of the beings. It's actually not telepathy. It's empathetic manipulation and thought control. <laughs> you know, that was pretty specific. I'm so glad you, uh, yeah, good. Thanks for bringing that. Cause I had totally forgotten that little fact. Um, yeah. And, and what's interesting is that when those articles came out in UFO mag in late in 1998, it, it was like, there was no follow-up. Like, it's just like, it's like the magazine published them. And the entire world just kept on right and going, including the UFO community. I think no one, I mean, if anyone was talking about it, uh, no one was writing about it. Right. I you mean, know, it's, 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 and then everyone just forgot. And uh, there was no, no one talked about Zodiac until, until Putoff mentioned it in that email, uh, which was exposed in 2019. I started out extremely skeptical about this whole thing. I thought this was just rubbish from the tabloids, but I was surprised to find thousands of U.S. government documents from intelligence agencies that tended to indicate that there was a little bit more to this than uh, met the eye. So I went to seek guidance from the various highest levels of the United States intelligence community, and uh, I was quite alarmed at what I was able to learn. Now we are, in this report that, that we're now going to show, we're going to hear a conversation featuring you Tell me the context of that conversation. Well, I had contacted Admiral Bobby Ray Inman, who was the head of the National Security Agency in the United States, uh, Deputy Director at CIA, uh, Director of Naval Intelligence, and, and a variety of intelligence posts, uh, a, a technologist, and uh, clearly someone that, if this was really uh, accurate, that there really were UFOs and uh, non-human intelligence around, uh, this is a man who had to know. Mm -hmm. So I was able to contact him, thanks to uh, a contact through Admiral Lord Hill Norton here in the uh, UK, uh, and this uh, conversation, he alarmingly uh, not only indicated that uh, these issues were covered under national secrecy laws, but that the United States government did in fact have possession of the hardware associated with this. In other words, this was an actual physical phenomenon. As a the craft, a spaceship. S several of them, and they were in operational condition, which I assume suggested that uh, they had been in contact, that they had been given these craft for some reason or another, because they certainly weren't crashed vehicles. Do, do you uh, anticipate that any of the recovered vehicles would ever be uh, become available for uh, technological research outside of the uh, military circles? Again, I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ten years ago, the answer would have been no. Yeah. Uh, whether as time has evolved, they're beginning to become more open on it, is a possibility. A short time later, Bob Exler received this call. Mr. Eckler, this is Tom King in Admiral Inman's office. Yes, you would be breaching confidence and, and or violation of the security laws and discussing his involvement in any matter. 
heard what you said earlier, but obviously the big problem always is the pictures are never conclusive. The pictures, yes, are not conclusive, but when you get involved in an investigation and you find the extraordinary physical evidence left behind, and you find, you talk to the witnesses, medical doctors, uh, officials of uh, governments and so forth, uh, in the, one of the cases that we had just seen uh, some video from, there was a Canadian official who was actually uh, uh, taken on board the craft. Uh, uh, when you subject these uh, areas of testimony to uh, lie detectors, polygraph exams, using the kind of technology that we have to determine whether someone's actually telling the truth or not, uh, the results become absolutely nothing short of alarming. Okay, if these governments, the Canadian government, the American government, if they are in possession of spacecraft, if they have made contact with aliens, why don't they tell us? What I was able to learn is that the issue of secrecy uh, dates back into the uh, early 1950s. And in 1959, actually, NASA had a study conducted by the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C., addressing the issue of whether this uh, alarming issue of a confrontation with an extraterrestrial culture uh, should be re uh, released to the public, this information. Uh, it was determined that there would be grave consequences for just an overt uh, uh, public pronouncement by government officials uh, so a determination what does that mean we would all panic well not necessarily necessarily just panic but the issues that it presented uh, not only theology but issues involving economics uh, uh, standards of monetary uh, concerns uh, if you acknowledge a uh, type of technology that renders fossil fuel related industries obsolete yes. for example you have grave consequences economically all the way around the of world course you do. all our values are rendered so the determination yes. you know, the determination was made that the only way to avoid this chaos would be through a slow indoctrination process over a matter of decades. You really believe? You, have, you, have you had a close encounter, as they say, or have you seen UFOs? Well, I wouldn't really call it a close encounter. I think uh, it has more to do with the contacts I've had with the U.S. intelligence community and being a technologist and uh, being called in to analyze uh, uh, various video films and photographic evidence. Uh, it, it's quite conclusive to me. I have, in fact, uh, seen with my own eyes uh, on quite a number of occasions, uh, well over 20 uh, at, at very close range a number of these vehicles it's quite extraordinary technology anybody interested mm -hmm. in technology would be it's like a kid in a candy store really and there's no way that you could be mistaken and it could have been an airplane helicopter or something of that nature mm, well Admiral Inman convinced me that uh, these vehicles were uh, not manufactured by human technology so uh, that's pretty conclusive for me do you think though that the government know this is happening know that it's going on but why don't they want the rest of us to know why do they not want that uh, Yes, you are correct. The government, uh, many governments around the world uh, uh, do in fact know. In fact, NATO conducted a study in the 60s involving quite a, quite a number of these incidents. Uh, the decisions uh, to maintain secrecy regarding this uh, center more around uh, not upsetting the economic apple cart, uh, uh, religion, theology issues uh, that come into play, and quite a number of issues that uh, essentially center around science and technology. Uh, we do have to come to grips with the reality that uh, perhaps human beings aren't the only intelligence uh, in the universe and that uh, they have in fact been here to visit in mm -hmm. spite of uh, projects uh, like the NASA SETI project, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence in, uh, in deep space, uh, that there are serious issues associated with this. And we have uh, a mentality where we like to kind of poke fun at the mm -hmm. issue through tabloids and so forth. And like this kind of thing, this is what we, we perceive an alien to be like. Well, these are actual uh, photographs taken from a case up in Canada right. uh, that have indeed been authenticated by a Canadian government official who was taken on board the craft and uh, apparently had some form of telepathic communication with the, uh, uh, the occupants, the pilots of the vehicle, as you might say. Uh, they are different than us, but it's interesting to note that they are humanoid and that, that mm -hmm. they have uh, uh, two arms and hands and two eyes and so forth. They're, they're quite much like us, only in, in significant ways they're different. Uh, of course, we're, you know, if there's one that comes there's obviously going to be more and just like we have different species of humans on this planet I'm quite certain there's different species of, uh, of alien life forms so we could run into malevolence in fact President Reagan on several occasions uh, uh, alerted concern about the potential hostilities from outer space and, and why it would be important for us to work together on this planet with superpowers and so on uniting uh, clearly the problem that we're confronted with here is that 
although technologically these beings may be more intelligent than us, uh, we appear to be more advanced in areas of, uh, of civility. We, we have emotions and, and things like that, and we have concern for our fellow man, whereas that doesn't seem to be the case necessarily in some of these other cultures. Bob, thanks very much indeed. It does seem strange that we can't get on with one another in this world, so you, you wonder whether we will get on with, with aliens, but thank you. Right, thank, thank you. you.